is presented by the Diocese of Venice in Florida. The Diocese of Venice in Florida presents the Mass. This morning, the TV Mass comes to you from Santa Maria Chapel on the campus of Epiphany Cathedral School in Venice, Florida. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Well, welcome all of you who are watching, whether you're watching from home, and we have an incredible population that's watching in the prisons, and to, to welcome you to this Mass here at the, at the Epiphany Cathedral. My name is Father Sean Monahan. I'm a priest of the Oblates of the Virgin Mary, serving here at Epiphany. And as we prepare our hearts, to enter into this Mass. Today we celebrate the great feast of the Holy Trinity. Let's ask for the grace for the Lord to help us call to mind our sins, those areas that we want to cry out for the great gift of His mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We, we praise, praise you, you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. God our Father, <clears throat> who by sending into the world the word of truth and the spirit of sanctification made known to the human race your wondrous mystery, grant us, we pray, that in professing the true faith we may acknowledge the trinity of eternal glory and adore your unity, powerful in majesty. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses said to the people, Ask now of the days of old before your time, ever since God created man upon the earth. Ask from one end of the sky to the other, did anything so great ever happen before? Was it ever heard of? Did a people ever hear the voice of God speaking from the midst of fire as you did and live? Or did any God venture to go and take a nation for himself from the midst of another nation by testings, by signs and wonders, by war, with strong hand and outstretched arm and by great terrors all of which the Lord your God did for you in Egypt before your very eyes. This is why you must know and fix in your heart that the Lord is God in the heavens above and on earth below, and that there is no other. You must keep his statutes and commandments that I enjoin on you today. 
that you and your children after you may prosper and that you may have long life on the land which the Lord your God is giving you forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. reading from the letter of St. Paul, the Romans. Brothers and sisters, those who are led by the Spirit of God are sons of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. The Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God, and if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ if only we suffer with him, so that we may also be glorified with him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, o Lord. The eleven disciples went to Galilee to the mountain to which Jesus had ordered them. When they all saw him, they worshipped, but they doubted. Then Jesus approached and said to them, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always until the end of the age. The Gospel of the Lord. Seems to me that when you see the different genres of movies, a lot of them are very predictable. If you go to a romance movie, boy meets girl, girl meets boy. Usually there's some misunderstanding and then they come together and they live happily ever after. At least that's what happens on the Hallmark Channel. If you are looking at or watching a, a war movie or a fight movie like Rocky, it's good versus bad. And it, usually, you know, it, 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 there's a scene or there's a moment where it looks like the good guy's going to lose. But then he comes back like in Rocky and he wins. But then there are movies that are not so predictable. Those are your mystery movies. And what I love about a good mystery book or a good mystery movie is that the end usually catches us by surprise. We're trying to see where it's going, but there's something very pleasing about the surprise at the end. Today, we celebrate not just one of the great mysteries of our faith, but I would say the great mystery of our faith, the mystery of the Trinity. It's the mystery of who God is. And he's revealed himself as the three divine persons, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, yet one God. But this is a mystery that we're not supposed to solve. It's not a mystery that we're ever going to completely understand because it's because God's infinite. Our minds cannot get around fully the mystery of who God is. But God gave us a heart. And our hearts can more readily enter into that mystery. It's not a mystery to be solved. 
It's a mystery to enter into. And what, what is unique about our hearts? Our hearts are made for love. Our hearts are made for relationship. That's the mystery of who God is. The, the relationship of Father, Son, Holy Spirit, equal. But what, 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 what unites them is God's love. And it's the love that they share among themselves. But the, for us, as we celebrate this feast of the Holy Trinity, it says we're, we're not here just to celebrate it from the outside. We're invited to enter into the Trinity. How do we enter into the Trinity? Through Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way to the Father. No one can come to the Father unless he comes through me. And we heard at the end of the gospel today, the Great Commission. Jesus says, go therefore and make all nations, disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is the door, doorway that we go through to come into relationship with Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And we do it profoundly through the sacrament of baptism. We heard in the second reading, St. Paul talks about the spirit of adoption. You've received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. St. Paul, he's writing this letter to the Romans and He's speaking and using the Roman understanding of adoption, which is really beautiful and really profound. Underneath Roman law, if you're baptized, you get a new name. Any debts that you had would be automatically canceled. You are co-heirs. You're equal to the other siblings as it relates to an inheritance. And here's the most, I think, beautiful part is that you can never be abandoned. A, a parents who adopt someone with Roman law, the understanding is that they know what they're getting and they legally cannot abandon that child. They can abandon their other children, but they cannot abandon someone who's been adopted. And Jesus says, you have received a spirit of adoption through whom we cry, Abba, Father. In baptism, what you and I have experienced is, is profound. It's something we celebrate today because where it leads us, where it invites us, to be in a deeper intimacy Father, with the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. In baptism, you were given a new name. And in baptism, all the debt of our sin is forgiven. In baptism, we are made co-heirs with, with Christ. We say that in, in the Eucharistic prayer, that we are co-heirs with Christ. That the, the Father sees in us a reflection of his Son. And he goes, I see my Son in you your family. Pray for the grace as we continue with this Mass, as we prepare to receive Jesus in the Eucharist. And for those of you who are praying at home to spiritually say, Lord, help my heart be open to, to enter into this incredible mystery, the mystery of who you are as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, but also the mystery of who I am, who you reveal me to be as your beloved son, as your beloved daughter. Amen. Amen. We are now going to pray the creed. And what's amazing about the creed, we pray it every Sunday and on solemnities, is the creed, when we pray it, we're, we're going through the Trinity, the mystery of who God is, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible, I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Heavenly Father, we now come before you as we place before you our prayers, our petitions. For Pope Francis, Bishop Duane, all bishops, priests, and religious, may they have the steadfastness of the Spirit as they guide us in understanding God's limitless love for all creation, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church and her faithful, may they proclaim the good news with their lives in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer loneliness and for those who suffer illness and isolation, May God's compassion and the healing hand of Jesus, the divine physician, be consolation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they have eternal life with God in heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Heavenly Father, look with favor upon these requests and grant us what we need according to your will. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, we be accepted by you, O Lord, may I sacrifice your sight this day, be pleasing to you, Lord. Wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice in yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Sanctified by the invocation of your name, we pray, O Lord our God, this oblation of our service, and by it make us an eternal offering to you, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit, you are one God, one Lord. Not in the unity of a single person, but in a trinity of one substance. For what you have revealed to us of your glory, we believe equally of your Son and of the Holy Spirit, so that in confessing of the true and eternal Godhead, you might be adored in what is proper to each person, their unity and substance, and their equality and majesty. For this is praised by angels and archangels, cherubim too and seraphim, who never cease to cry out each day, as with one voice they acclaim.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, and by the help of your mercy, may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, 
You take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. May receiving this sacrament, O Lord our God, bring us health of body and soul as we confess your eternal Holy Trinity and undivided unity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And, with your spirit. and may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Thank you for watching TV Mass. The TV Mass is made possible because of contributions from viewers like you. To make a contribution to TV Mass, please send a check to the Diocese of Venice, care of TV Mass, 1000 Pinebrook Road, Venice, Florida, 34285. And you can view this Mass or previous Masses on the Diocese of Venice website. Visit dioceseofvenice.org and scroll down to the Televised Mass button.